now is how to draw a cladogram. And normally you guys are going to be interpreting them, but I do want you to know that there are going to be some examples where you are going to have to draw your own. And at first it seems overwhelming, okay? But there are some easy ways and tools to break this down, okay? You guys may not know what an amoeba, a slug is. I would hope you know what an owl, a human, and a snake are, but who knows, okay? I didn't give you pictures of these. So what I do, what? Yes, the amoeba sisters. But what I want you to do is I want you to look at all these different organisms, and I want you to look at the derived characteristics. All that means is what characteristics could be present. Present means they have them. Absent means they do not have them. So what I'm going to do is you can either star or highlight the ones that say present. Okay? Go ahead and highlight or star the ones that say present. That helps you break it down. Okay? Now, the next thing you're going to do is you are going to go ahead and you are going to draw a line. Down here is the most simplistic or basic. The one that has the, is, is the common ancestor of the ones that are going after it. Here is the most complex based on these traits. So these organisms are not in order. Which one has the fewest things present? The amoeba. So at the bottom, you're going to draw a line and you are going to write amoeba. Let's go to the next one. Who has the second to last Present things. What would come after the amoeba? What is the second to last basic? The slug. Yes, you're going to draw a line for the slug. Exactly right. What would come after the slug? The snake. Yes. Snake. What will come after the snake? The owl. And then it would be human. Guys, the only way that we figured that out is by looking at this and saying, okay, the amoeba doesn't have any of these things present, so it's the most basic. The slug only has one thing present, so it's going to be next. But then the owl is a little bit more complex, so that can't be it. The snake only has two things present, so that would be next, and then the owl, and then the human, okay? Does everyone feel like they could have done that? Yes, maybe no. Thumbs. Yes, maybe no. Okay, excellent. Now let's look at traits, okay? So first thing is, is you do the scale. The second thing is, is what is actually present. So what separates the amoeba from the slug in terms of all of these derived characteristics? Yeah, amoeba sisters are unicellular or single cellular. Slugs are multicellular. What does multicellular mean? Yeah, it has more than one cell. It's made up of more than one cell. An amoeba is single cell. What separates a slug from a snake? Let's double check it. Yes, a slug does not have a backbone, but a snake does. So we're going to draw that right here. So one thing I want to ask you guys before we move forward, does the snake also have multi-cells? Yes. Everything from the slug forward has multicellular. Everything from the snake Forward has the backbone and is multicellular. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now, what separates the snake from the owl? Legs. What also separates it? Feathers. Let's, let's talk about that. Would it be appropriate for me to put feathers right here? Why not? Because humans don't have feathers. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to draw a line here, and you're going to put feathers. Then what separates the owl from the human other than feathers? Hair and thumbs. Bingo. All right. So what I want to go over real quick, <coughs> we're going to do these questions together. How do we feel about that top problem? Yes, maybe no. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, cool. So Identify the organism in the table that is least closely related to the others. Who is the most distantly related? The amoeba. Why? Yeah, it doesn't have any of these. Which trait is it that separates the amoeba from the slug? Yeah, all other organisms.
are multicellular. Okay. List the animals in the cladogram in orders from distance from least closely related to most closely related. Who is the most distantly related? Amoeba. Who would come next? The slug. Oh, so we're just putting them in order. Wow. The snake. Guess what comes get next? What comes next? Ow. Ow. Thank you. I was going to be wait. Did we not get that? Human is last. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Here's a question I really like. Which animal is more closely related to the human? The owl or the snake? So let's talk about this. So we're looking at the human, and we're comparing it to the owl or the snake. <clears throat> How many traits separate the snake and the human? One, two, right? Hair and thumbs I would put in a category. But if you wanted to say three, you could. So let's say hair and thumbs are two separate things. What, how many things separate the human and the snake? Three. One, two, three. Right? Because neither of them have feathers. So the owl and the snake have three differences. How many things separate the human and the owl? <clears throat> One, two, three. Right? Or you could have said two consistently. So is it more closely related to one over the other? No. So they are actually equally related. Number five I'd like for you to attempt. I'm not going to count it wrong, okay? If you need more help on this, please let me know. Remember the very first step in this is first drawing out what is the order of the organisms and then their traits and then interpreting the questions. If you need help, come see me.